Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. We're going to be joined in this hour with Cheryl Chumley talking about the police state USA. And, of course, there's many aspects of that. How are they going to push that? Well, we just had a clip in the last segment from David Petraeus, where he was talking about how NAFTA has been in place for about 20 years and North America has replaced America. That was his words. That was his words. And that's what we're seeing happening right now. They're now rolling this out with essentially boots on the ground. We've seen the bankers attack us from the air, if you will, uh, taking our property with the uh, financial collapse of the mortgage markets. And what might happen in the future with other economic collapse? Well, they're going to have a surge, a demographic surge. That's what's going on right now. We've got a lot of young people, a lot of teenagers being brought into this country, being treated far better than anyone here. They're not being harassed. They're being brought in with dignity. They're being treated with dignity and bust into the interior of our country. That's what the requests on FedBiz, op, FedBiz Ops was talking about. They said they wanted these People brought in with dignity. Who gets dignity when they come into the United States at the airports? They haven't told TSA to stand down, and yet our borders are wide open. It shows the hypocrisy, the false facade that we've been sold by Homeland Security, the same agency that creates, uh, that, that controls both our borders as well as militarizing the police. And, of course, we need to remember that Homeland Security was created and the justification for it was the false flag attacks of 10 years ago, 9-11. And this is what Dick Cheney chillingly had to say. Do you think we get through this decade without a massive attack on the homeland? I doubt it. I doubt it. I think there will be another attack. Um, and the next time, I think it's likely to be far deadlier than the last one. You Let can me just imagine what would happen yeah. if somebody could smuggle a... Uh, a nuclear device, put it in a shipping container, and drive it down the Beltway outside Washington D.C. It, it, do you, by the way, if that were Everybody to happen, knows do you see the government reconstituting <laughs> because it would have to be military rule for a period of time at least. Well, there there was uh, some years ago a program called the Continuity of Government program. It was oh yeah, uh, that doesn't exist Cold anymore. War, uh, <laughs> strategy that we pursued here, and it, basically it involved. Um, having a, a government in waiting, if you will, ready to go in the event of a nuclear attack on the United States so that we could always uh, maintain uh, the constitutional-based uh, governmental authority. This is what these guys uh, have been fantasizing about. You know, when I saw, remember that uh, picture that we got of Hillary Clinton when her book tour came through last Friday? Uh, she's in dark sunglasses on the back of the bus and everything. And I was looking at that, and I told my wife, I said, you know, uh, that what does that remind me of? It's like ah, I got it. It's Doctor Strange Love, you know, <laughs> a picture of the mad scientist. This is what Dick Cheney is channeling, and you know, it, it, we're laughing about it, but it's not a laughing matter. They're perfectly capable of doing this in a compartmentalized way. I'm sure he knows just the guy to put in a suitcase nuke and to make this happen. And of course, this is what the neocons, this is what the people who are pushing the militarized police state, they're always scaring this, they're always holding that up. What if we lose a city to a nuclear bomb? That has been what people like Newt Gingrich is talking about. You know, when uh, Ron Paul would talk in the debates about how we needed a rational and a sane foreign policy and not to provoke uh, everybody in the world to hate us, which is part of their game. As Alex has said many times, these Muslim terrorists really do hate America. They really do want to kill Americans. What they don't realize, though, is that in many cases they're being used, controlled, equipped, and supplied at the top levels by the CIA, by the U.S. government. That's what we saw happening in Benghazi. We saw that happening in Syria. We can expose this, and we can stop this. 
just as we're exposing the police state, and now we've got people on both the left and the right pushing back against it. We've got The Guardian and the ACLU sounding like the John Burt Society and the New American of decades ago. People are starting to understand that this is the existential threat to America. It's our liberty being taken away. You will never have liberty if you give up your security. You will just live in a maximum security state. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Edward Group. It took me 20 years of searching the globe to find the deposit of the highest purity iodine available. The new Survival Shield X2 is mined from seven to 10,000 feet below the earth in pristine, environmentally clean conditions. The iodine crystals we use are extracted from an ancient 300 million plus year old deposit deep in the earth. It's the strongest nascent iodine on the market today. It delivers 650 micrograms per drop. Experience the new formula. Experience the ancient purity. Shield your family. Survival Shield X2, available now at InfoWarsLife.com. X2 from InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. Chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supplies worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. In the near future. When you realize how fake it all is, the football, the security basketball. Alert. Security alert. This is Homeland Security. Analysis. InfoWars building independent media operations. We let the worst people get controlled and tell us that we are the ones responsible. Prime Directive discredit Alex Jones. Jones is the wildly popular conspiracy theorist. It's a popular conspiracy theory talk show called InfoWars. Alex Jones is now in an Austin jail. These people are assaulted. Targeting of patriots engaged. They are never going to stop. They're never going to deviate from their program until we stop them. Block free iPhone app at infowars.com. Block free podcast and video feed. Imperative destroy prison planet TV. You gotta set your eye on the enemy, not worry about what propaganda they put out intellectually. It's because you can feel it. Renewed hostile actions against United States ships on the high seas in the Gulf of Tonkin have today required me to order the military forces of the United States to take action in reply. Dr. Martin Luther King, the apostle of nonviolence in the civil rights movement, has been shot to death in Memphis, Tennessee. Senator Kennedy has been shot. Is that possible? He still has the gun. The gun is pointed at me right at this moment. People calling themselves members of the Weather Underground last night planted bombs in federal office buildings in Washington and Oakland, California. They took the babies out of the incubators and left the children to die on the cold floor. Survivors of the USS Liberty are demanding a congressional investigation into what happened and acknowledgement that the Israeli Air Force bombed a U.S. intelligence Navy ship. The death of bin Laden marks the most significant achievement to date in our nation's effort to defeat al-Qaeda. The Taliban is taking responsibility for shooting down a U.S. helicopter. More than 30 people were killed, and there are reports this morning that most of them are U.S. Navy SEALs. There may be a false flag incident where some uh, ship goes down and you be used for the excuse to accelerate the next war. If there's one thing that has unified Democrats and Republicans, and everybody in between, 
things that we all hate at the bank bailout. The Department of Homeland Security is apparently on a huge ammo buying spree. It comes out to like 1.6 billion rounds of ammunition. Today, it is infinitely easier to kill a million people than to control a million people. They estimated that they would have to eliminate 25 million people in these re-education centers. And when I say eliminate, I mean kill. I'm here to warn people. You keep telling me to shut up. This isn't a game. From the front lines of the information war, it's Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight here in Austin, and we have joining us Cheryl Chumley, author of Police State USA, a book that we carry, to carry at InfoWarsStore.com. Now, Cheryl Chumley is a journalist. She's a veteran news writer with The Washington Times. She writes for a lot of other publications as well. Her bio says she spent the last 15 years writing about a wide range of topics from politics, policy, and presidential elections to small town courts, cops, and county government. And that's given her a front row seat to corruption, government malfeasance, bureaucracy, and unconstitutional actions. Boy, I tell you what, you want a front row seat to all this stuff, you just get out there and start reporting about it. Her book is A Layman's Guide to the Latest in Constitutional Hits that This Nation Has Taken in the Name of the War on Drugs and Many Other Things. Welcome, Cheryl. Hey, David. Thanks so much for having me. Great to be here. Well, thank you for joining us, and thank you for trying to bring people's attention to what's going on, because... This is something that I, I, I've seen unfolding for quite some time. Where would you say that things like uh, civil asset forfeiture and everything, where did that all begin? Well, it began, um, as you mentioned in, in your intro, uh, that, that particular aspect started with the war on drugs, uh, civil forfeitures. Mm -hmm. But I, I see the state of our nation as crumbling way back when the progressive era uh, began, and it really ratcheted up in speed after September 11th. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, but, but before we get to that, let's talk about civil asset forfeiture. Unpack that for the audience a little bit as to what's really involved in that, because it really is kind of an Alice in Wonderland thing, isn't it? <laughs> it sure is. Uh, just to put it bluntly, civil, aperture, civil forfeiture uh, laws give police at the local level, state and federal level, the right to take your properties without due process of law. The way it works is police officers, they get an incentive from the federal government for confiscating properties done uh, based on causes of suspicion of drugs, suspicion of certain crimes, and they get to keep those properties properties, regardless of whether uh, you are actually proven guilty or not in court. And what that does is it puts the victims in a position of having to go to court if they are innocent of the, the crime, supposedly, that the police officers pulled them over for. Uh, they, if they are put in the position of having to go to court and prove their innocence to win back their properties. This is a million dollar business. It's turned uh, police departments into cash cow machines, seeking out any cause to pull people People over on the side of the road, confiscate their cash, their cars, their properties, their cell phones, and so forth. That's right. And, and, and what's really amazing is in many of these cases, they bring charges not against a person, but against the inanimate object that they seize. So you see things like the U.S. government versus $9,000 of cash, the U.S. government versus Learjet serial number such and such. They'll never charge the person with a crime, but they say, well, you know, I think that maybe the money that you're, you got on your person as you're flying on the airplane, I think that that's maybe involved somehow with uh, drugs. So I'm just going to say that it is, and I'm going to keep it. And that becomes a major portion of the funding of a lot of these local police stations, police departments. It's really corrupted them by allowing them to keep that money. And I remember, you know, Miami Vice, when that came out, that, that was a way for that to be glamorized, to be made acceptable to the public that, hey, look, these are, are really cool guys and they're cops and they get to keep all these fast cars and fast boats that they confiscate from other people. Isn't that great? You know, that's, sold, that's the way they sold it to us in the culture, isn't it? Well, it's, it's true. These are egregious hits to the Constitution, and there's more than one type. There's criminal asset forfeiture, and then there's civil asset forfeiture, which has less of a standard for police to make. And as a matter of fact, the Supreme Court just ruled earlier this year that in civil asset forfeitures, uh, police... Uh, do not have to return properties to suspected criminals or, you know, suspects in these cases until the court rules, uh, you know, for or against them. So what that means in the practical aspect 
If you're carrying cash in your vehicle, you're pulled over, the police take your cash based on some nebulous charge they drum up, and you need that cash to launch a lawsuit to win back that cash. The Supreme Court says, no, you can't get access to your cash to even fight your own civil forfeiture case. And, and I think the case that you're talking about, if I remember correctly, it was a couple who were accused of stealing medical 